Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Prayer and Devotion on this Tuesday, which happens to be the first day of school here at uh, WPCA Christian Academy uh, of Puxico. And uh, so I'm a little discombobulated. I'm going to have to work on uh, angle for the camera and all that. If, I apologize if you're being inundated by the sun here, uh, but this is my new home for uh, the school year for morning prayer and devotion. I apologize for coming to you uh, five or six minutes late here this morning, uh, but just trying to get into uh, the new routine. I appreciate each of you who are part of this prayer ministry and helping me at the new time uh, to get in the groove here this morning. We have a praise report to share with you today. Uh, Sister Landers has been discharged from the hospital, so we give God the praise for that. And um, we ask for your prayers today, not only for uh, the Christian school here at Greater Vision, but also for all the students going back to school uh, this week. Uh, Puxico goes back to school uh, on Thursday. Uh, Dexter starts back to school this week. I saw that Papa Bluff uh, started yesterday. Several other schools started yesterday. Uh, so let's pray for all the staff um, that will be involved in our children's education throughout this school year. Uh, we also want to remember the spiritual and family needs uh, that have been uh, submitted to our team. I'll take a moment to try to mention as many of these as possible. Uh, the Cummins family, the Perkins, the Joneses, the Marlins, the Moors, the Pulliams. Uh, Sister Pam asking us to pray specifically for her granddaughter Alyssa that she would uh, start coming to church. She lives right here next to the church. And so we want to uh, cover her in prayer today. Debbie Biddick's family, Carmen's nephew Haddon, uh, needs wisdom and decision-making, divine favor, encouragement. Belinda needs encouragement. She has several ongoing situations with a family member causing her some problems. Um, she's needing to get her fall financial aid to come through for college and uh, completing her background check a second time due to an error uh, in the first, um, on the first occasion she has to have this done to start her new job. A prayer for Jeffrey for reconciliation in his family. Stephanie and her children need restoration in relationships. Annette and Dave, uh, Marcia's friends, Ashley and Linda, Johnny and Gracie all have needs today. Our Mingo RCF residents and Job Corps students. Uh, Rose Brown's family needs salvation. Johnny Nelson's nieces and nephews, many of them need the Lord. Carmen asks us to pray for David. Uh, Judy Johnson asks us to pray for her grandson. Also praying for Beulah Ziegler's granddaughter, uh, Cheney and Becca, uh, JR. All these need the Lord in their lives today. Many who are battling addictions that we continue to lift up and we're praying for prodigals to come home. And of course, for every uh, city to have revival. We have unspoken requests today for Brianna, the Cummins family, Judy Johnson's family, Johnny Nelson's mother, his niece Jessica, his brother Alan, Terry's youngest sister, Robin Kay, Venus's daughters, uh, Belinda with an urgent unspoken need, and some other unspoken requests. And Rose Brown has several unspoken needs. We continue to pray for the family of Randy Lewis, who passed away recently, and praying traveling mercies for Pat and Les, and for Ryan and Michelle Walker and Finn, um, all of them traveling, and we need to pray for God's protection for them. Lift up our nation today, and our military service members uh, as well, as they protect each of us uh, from harm and put their own selves in harm's way to do that. Uh, those who are in nursing homes need our continued prayers for strength and encouragement. Uh, pray for our missionaries once again today, whether they be uh, missionaries in foreign lands or right here uh, in North America, in our cities and in our villages. Everyone needs to hear the word of the Lord. Many, many health needs today. Praying for Clay, Matthew, Venus, Randy, Robbie, Ann, Robin Tibbs, Cheryl Ogden, Bob and Shirley, Judy Williams' brother, George Tibbs, Devin Huff, Johnny Nelson, 
Jessica O'Hara, Grace, Terry Nelson's sister Cindy, John Sutter, Meredith, Sue Morris, Carl Metcalf, Eddie Pox, Lois Link, and Michael, all with health needs today. Mr. Jennings and Ms. Patterson on hospice care. We continue to pray for several children on our list who have various needs. These include Jaden Short, Brantley and Elsie, Darla's granddaughter, Tammy's granddaughter, Abram and Abel. Let's pray for all those who are battling cancer, uh, those with arthritis pain and mobility issues, back pain. I pray for those who suffer with dementia and memory issues, those with Parkinson's disease, stomach problems, uh, liver problems, illness, migraines, heart problems, lung issues. I pray for those with kidney problems and diabetes. Uh, pray for continued recovery for those who have had surgery recently or are recovering from the effects of stroke or other serious health issues that have set them back uh, long term and needing God's help to fully recover. Um, Robin Tibbs had surgery on her leg yesterday. Let's continue to pray for her as well as others who are having surgery in the coming days in this month alone. Uh, Michael Combs, uh, Emma, Cheryl's family member will all be having surgery as well. Uh, Connie Coleman was found uh, in her home unresponsive and determined to have a brain aneurysm. Uh, let's continue to pray for her and also uh, pray for those who are in the hospital. Dan with sepsis, Tammy Ryan with sepsis. Uh, continue to believe for them to receive a touch from the Lord uh, today. Good morning to each of you. Thank you for joining me here today in this new environment. I do appreciate it so uh, very much. Belinda, Johnny, Sherman, Kristen, Marsha, Pam, um, Carmen. Make sure I'm not missing anybody that's currently on board with us this morning. I think I've got all of you at the moment except for a couple names that just aren't uh, showing up yet, but I see eight of you here with me now. So thank you so very much for praying with us today. Please look at the new request. And Johnny does have a praise report that Pat and Les made it back safely from Ohio. So uh, we can remove that need from our prayer list today. Looking here, uh, prayers for Laura. She's back in the hospital. This is uh, Brother Virgil Poyum's sister. Uh, so thank you, Pam, for sharing that connection to give us some context there. And she has been in and out of the hospital in recent days. So let's continue to pray for her. Let's go to the word of the Lord this morning. Isaiah 55, verse number eight says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my way, uh, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. I ask you to begin to read Matthew chapter five through seven uh, over the next couple of days as we're going to talk about things from the Sermon on the Mount. Today we're gonna to talk some about uh, this first section in Matthew chapter five that we know as the Beatitudes. And when we look at the Sermon on the Mount, how we approach it uh, changes everything. If we see it as an instructional manual of salvation, then every time that we fail to live up to Jesus' words, we will question whether God is still for us. But this sermon is not about how to achieve salvation, but it's how that we demonstrate our walk with God. Those who uh, God has transformed resist the cultural norms around them. So this sermon is both an invitation and it's an inventory. It invites us into a different way of seeing, hearing, and being. We are called to confound, confront, and convert a world that is in darkness and to bring them into God's uh, peace-giving, joy-fulfilling reign in their lives. It's not just in personal effort alone, but in the grace of God that he has so generously poured out 
uh, for each of us. So there's that angle of it, but then this sermon also prompts us to take inventory of our thoughts, our words, and our actions to see if they're in alignment with God's vision for us. So consider some of these major themes. How can I forgive someone who hurt me? Am I serving God or money? Is trust or anxiety shaping my life? Can my word be taken at face value? Do I bless those who cursed me? Do I have integrity in my relationships? And we, all these things we see in this one sermon, a, a grand inventory for us to take of our lives. And we might conclude uh, that Jesus' path makes no sense. And if we conclude that in one, uh, one way, we would be right because in the eyes of the world, the wisdom of God is nonsense. But for those who are weary of anchoring our lives in the unfulfilling promises of our surrounding culture, Jesus offers this better way. We're talking about the narrow way, the life that we desperately want but we struggle to attain. It is actually in this simple life that the Lord shows us that narrow path that requires trusting him, trusting that he knows what's best for us, even when it conflicts with our assumptions and expectations. As we read in our text this morning, God said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and your thoughts are my thoughts than your thoughts. Jesus' words to us in this famous Sermon on the Mount help set our lives in a particular direction. They set us on course for that straight path, that narrow gate, stripping off whatever's weighing us down and helping us to realize how wonderful the way of Christ really is. So today, take some time and read through the Beatitudes once again. I know you've read through them 147 times probably, but read through them again and see the invitations that you sense coming to you from God. What stands out to you in its major themes as something that you need to evaluate in your life today? Take time to take inventory of where you are in Christ today, and he will bless you as you are mindful of the things of him. As you set your affections on things above, you're going to receive blessings today from the Lord. Amen. God bless you today. Let's pray together. We're short on time. That's completely my fault. Uh, but we'll get in the groove here with this new time and new setup. And um, I don't know if you like the scenery behind me or not, uh, but the main thing is just the glare of the sun. I noticed when I lean in uh, to the camera, it looks very bad. So I noticed that and tried to back up a little bit uh, to help you out there. So hopefully we'll get this all squared away soon. And I won't be too distracted by looking out the window and seeing the things going on uh, beside me here as people are pulling up for school today. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you today for your goodness and your mercy to us. We thank you for this opportunity. Lord, thank you for a new day. Thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. We give you praise and glory today, God, for all that you're doing in our lives. And we just thank you, Lord, for your hand that's upon us. We know, God, that you're going to bless every effort today. You're blessing those uh, staff members uh, and teachers that are going to be guiding our students throughout the school year, not only in uh, this particular location, and, uh, but also in Donovan and our Christian school there, and also in all the public schools surrounding us. We pray, God, that you would just move and bless and give increase and provision where it's needed. And we thank you today for that. We thank you, Lord, for reaching down and touching those who have physical needs today, those who are in the hospital, those who are recovering from surgeries, those who are battling different types of disease, those with organ failure today. Lord, there's nothing too hard for you. We lift up Barbie Davis. God, we pray for her. We pray for Sherry needing a liver transplant. Lord, we pray, God, for all those with lung issues and heart problems those battling cancer today. Lord, there's nothing that's too hard for you. 
Hallelujah. We pray for those who are recovering from recent surgeries, those recovering from accidents, those recovering from major health setbacks. We pray today, God, that you would be with each one, that you would help and that you would uh, bless and strengthen them. Lord, those who have spiritual needs, those who are battling uh, mental health disorders, those uh, who are discouraged in their faith today, those, Lord, who are distracted by the cares of this life, we pray that you would just help each one, Lord, to find their way uh, to the closeness of your presence this morning. Help us to lay aside every weight, every hindrance. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we depend upon you. Have your way this morning. Have your way in my life, God. Help me to be what you want me to be. Bless our prayer warriors, God, and help them, Lord, strengthen them today against every stress that's coming against them. Everything in their lives today, Lord, that the enemy would try to use to discourage them, I pray against that. We know that nothing will separate us from your love, and we thank you for that promise of your word today. Hallelujah. Those who are burdened for the salvation of others, those who have prodigal children today. We pray, God, for those uh, children, Lord, that you would work on them, family members that are away from you, those who need peace and comfort today, that have lost someone dear to them in recent days. We pray, God, that you would help them, that you would strengthen them, that you would comfort them today with your very presence. For all these things today, God, we give you praise and glory, and we give you thanks. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for praying with me tomorrow morning. Hopefully I'll make that target time of 745 and uh, we'll be on the uh, journey here getting into this new routine. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord and I will see you tomorrow morning right here on Facebook at 745 a.m.